put your hands together and welcome an inspirational human being. First name Earl, last name Hodge. Welcome, my friend, to the TCAN Celebrity Tournament. Oh my gosh, Abby, that's awesome. You know what? I call you the Larry Bird of introductions. <laughs> um, you, you set it up and then you nail it. So uh, I, I can't be more honored to be here. It's really good with shtick. So welcome a kind, talented, intelligent, giving human being. Last name a horn. First name Rick. Rick, welcome <laughs> to the Celebrity Tournament, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Javi. That was, oh man. I got chill bumps just listening to you. You make it, you're making me really feel like I did something in life and instead, and I'm still not finished. But you're I'm not. here to win this entire TKN celebrity game. They don't, I'm already there. I'm, I'm the champ already. That's it. That's, you know, drop, don't drop the mic. Just, just go to the next one. Let's get these two months out of the way because the rest of these guys are just feeling around here. Man, oh man, I love to hear that, my friend. And you know, guys, Rick Morin's here to win it all. In about a moment, he will be competing for another title in this tournament, Sweet Mother of Mary. So put your hands together for one of the absolute greatest of all time. Last name Holmes, first name Larry. Larry, welcome to the tournament, my friend. Thank you very much. I, I, hell of a info, I tell you that. Well, you deserve every bit of it. And you, you can introduce me anytime. Merle, if you can, can you please describe a moment in your life in which you took the time to check the price before making an important decision. The floor is yours, good sir. I was eight years old and I got asked one day um, what I want to do, what I want to be. Um, I'm eight years old, I have absolutely no idea what I want to do, what I want to be. But it's the first time that the scope of my little mind had been widened to think of something I would never have thought of. Well, shortly after being asked, what do you want to do, what do you want to be? Um, I went to my grandparents' house. Uh, we entered the, the door, the two stairs ran up into the kitchen. I walk in and I look to my left and there it is. The Green Bay Packers are playing on television. I now had an answer. And I had an answer for what I was going to do, what I wanted to be. So one day a teacher came in the room and she said, you know what, really important for young kids to have goals and dreams and you need to pin them up in your room. It's where you start and end your day. I shared a room with my little brother, so I wasn't going to put anything up on my wall without it coming down. A few years after that, we're at dinner one night and my dad announces that this concrete basement that we use as our playground in the wintertime was gonna be converted into a couple bedrooms and a family room and an office space. And big deal was one of those bedrooms was gonna be mine. So as soon as he told me that, I said, I asked him if he could make me a wall of cork. He asked why I explained. I started thinking, well, how can I emphasize him? I started thinking about my favorite player is Walter Payton. I'm like, man, I'm gonna put a picture of him up. Every time somebody asked me um, what I was gonna do, what I wanted to be after that, I'd tell him I'm playing in the National Football League. And one of four things was always said to me right after I said that, oh my gosh, you know how hard that is. Do you know what the odds you playing in the National Football League are? I looked up at that goal and these words would would be born, find a way. It was not impossible. I've been watching people do it on television, so it wasn't impossible. The words that gave me hope, find a way, started everything, inspired that hope. But that Aristotle's quote, quote of, we are what we repeatedly do, therefore excellence is not an act but a habit, that gave me hope. I knew I had no room for error. I knew I had to be excellent. And I learned at that moment right there, there's two things in life that we can all do and two things that are powerful, no matter what your circumstances, no matter where your goal is, no matter what you're trying to accomplish or change or deadline might be, visuals are powerful. Self-reflection is important. And when we open ourselves up and challenge ourselves, that is actually how we grow, it's how we evolve, and it's how we accomplish things in life. And I was fortunate enough to play in the National Football League for nearly a decade. And, um, and it sent me on, on so many other journeys. But that was the first moment of truth I had in life and the first moment that I had a decision of what kind of price I was willing to pay and I was willing to pay. I got a text from La from Larry right here. Larry, before I kick it over to Rick, Larry, um, the floor is yours, I guess. You wanted to say something? You had a nice speech. And I tell you what, but you ain't never had Larry Holmes. Get Larry Holmes in there, you're going to get whooped. I can fight. You know, I'm here to win. You got to be ready. Stay ready. Always ready, Larry. Always ready. You know, I look at it in three different ways. I look at it from what my mother had to do and endure to make sure to make sure that four she fed four kids being a single parent. And the price for her was going to bed hungry. I never put up the visual board, but I always said. I'm going to take care of my mother. I'm going to do 
anything and everything that I had to do to make sure my mother would enjoy her life and just seeing it in her face and that the struggle of just making sure that we just had clothes on our back, food in our mouths and a roof over our head. So that was the price that she paid for me to make sure that I had the tools and the vehicles to, to make sure that I could facilitate a better life for myself. My goal was to be a high school principal because, <laughs> and because I had a, a guy named Walter Doc Hurley and uh, Doc was one of these young men in Hartford, Connecticut that would tell us, you know what? There's better places for you other than Hartford, other than being here because the world is big, it's not small. So the price that I paid to go to a Hampton Division II school, a very small historically black college, but always being in that shadow of saying, okay, that this team is, this, this, these people are better than me, or these players are better than me because I went to a small black college. And, and hearing Merle's story about having the visual, the visual boards up there, mine was never to make it in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Mine was to make it to help my mother ease the pain for my mother. When I signed that contract and I got my signing bonus from and getting drafted in the NBA by the Washington Bullets, I gave her that check. And she looked at me with this perplexed look. What are you going to live on? I'm good. You take that mom and make sure that you can enjoy yourself. And that lady inspired me to make sure that I worked hard and I still work hard till this day. I'm in this damn game right now. And the fact that I get to meet people outside of what I've done as a, as a professional basketball player, when it's all said and done, I'm a human being just like everybody else. I remember my first actual professional job I was still sleeping in a station wagon. Mm -hmm. I was bringing the old protein drink of orange juice and tuna because I couldn't afford actual whey protein <laughs> you know, back in the day. But, that, sounds like a good, that sounds like a good protein. I, and I didn't have nothing. My mom didn't. My dad didn't have nothing. My dad left. You know, and, and all, all I got is what they left, and they didn't leave nothing. So I had mm -hmm. to hustle in the car wash and working hard, you know, to get what I wanted. And when boxing came up and they started paying people for that, I got into that. Uh, Larry, my friend, I'll ask you the same question. You describe a moment in your life in which you took the time to check the price before you made an important decision, my friend. First thing my dad would always say to dad, this is nice, you know, you, we should get this from, from mom. He said, check the price, son, check the price. And that's what we had to do, check the price and see if we are qualified to uh, go on from there. We was poor, and I just want to tell you that. We was poor, poor, poor. <laughs> Welfare, Salvation Army. So, you know, we we was poor. Okay. And in my family, it was nine brothers and three sisters. And with all my brothers, they were bigger than me. And I had to, I had to share clothes with them. And my clothes, we, we had to swap so that we didn't look like we was swapping, going to school. We had to swap, we had to swap clothes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to start with Rick. What if you could trade places with a historical figure for a week? Who would you select and why? And it should be noted that whichever historical figure that you select would also have to thrive and adjust well if you were stepping into your shoes when you were in your prime. I could trade places with someone It would be Martin Luther King. And the reason why is because he, he made a change. I, I like when someone makes a change and a difference in someone else's and, and being caring enough to sacrifice his own life for the betterment of others. That's what, you know, when I look at Martin Luther King, he want everybody to be on the equal stage. And we're still dealing with a lot of the things that are, are prevalent now in our society. I look at him and say, well, he could take my place all day, every day, because I, all I did was play basketball and try to still emulate what he's done for people moving forward and trying to educate people to move forward and not look at people as individuals, but look at us as human beings and being accepting of where someone's from Larry, was there one person in history that if you could have a conversation with, 
who would that person be? Someone you've never had a conversation with from history. Who, who would that be? I hate to say this, Don King. Don King. <laughs> Don King does his thing, plays his numbers or whatever he does, and give you some left, some whatever left. Don King. Now people hate hate Don King because he he's that way. Right. He's smart. Um, General Patton actually is a guy that I have always been fascinated by because of a couple of things. First of all, the leader that he was, you know, he wasn't a general that sat and barked out, sit, um, barked out orders. You know, there was a point in World War II where our air cover was pinned down. We were done. General Patton's troops were further away than anybody. They didn't even ask him about it because it wasn't even a possible option. And he had made an about face already and they were halfway there. They ended up freeing up. Uh, they are cover, and actually, that was probably one of the most biggest moments in World War II, where we end up winning World War II. That sacrifice, you know, just has always overwhelmed me in the sense of, man, I, I don't think I could do that. Larry, if everyone on the planet could strive toward a common goal, what goal do you think that should be, and why? If we could all strive for the one goal, goal, I think that we should have is. Color and thing. Nobody got color. Everybody's the same color. Everybody get along with everybody, and that's the way I feel. You know, I I'm, I'm not a racist. I'm not or anything. I just want people to be able to get up in the morning and go out smiling and be happy. That's it. Uh, guys and gals, I'm gonna kick it over to Mr. Rick Mahorn. The question I have for you, sir, is: What concept do you think could have the most significant positive impact on humanity, and why? education and when I say that we have to look in the mirror and judge ourselves to say are we helping someone else around us are we helping to better this world in some way shape or form we look at and we all want to look at things differently and I'm with Larry where you say we're we're not we're all human beings we're not a color we you know it's, everything's we, we they they want to be, they want us to be separate and fighting against each other but we're all the same color we all need to pull up our bootstraps and say you know what we're gonna make this work we, we we're so separated in life that just it just pisses me off that you know we're looking oh you can't walk down the street without somebody grabbing oh you can't walk down this street or you and we're still in it today it just frustrates me that people will treat me different because I'm Rick Mahorn. I'm a human being, period. Just got lucky to play a sport or do something that can make an impact on someone's life. You don't learn that way. You can't look at the word education. You can't get educated about somebody's culture. If you don't know about their culture, how do you know about them? Lunch table, sit down the way I did in public mm -hmm. school, get to know someone. Merle, a genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus but a molder of consensus. Do you agree with that? A leader's responsibility is to lead. If you're trying to run a poll and win votes and make everybody like you, you can't lead. Um, you know, a leader's, a leader's vision or scope is different than those that are following. And that is where things are always misunderstood. There's one thing that a leader has to have if he wants to display is how you model things. You know, you can pontificate all you want. You can say the great, have the greatest speech known to mankind and walk off stage and do the complete opposite. And I will promise you this, people will do what they saw, not what they heard. Th this man, I think, would like to be known simply as Jeremy. Mr. London, welcome. <laughs> wow, man. Wow. How in the world did I drop into <laughs> this fever dream? <laughs> this is amazing, man. Jeremy, if you have to lend your vote to one, uh, Rick Mahorn, Larry, or... Merle, who would it be and why, my friend? That's cruel, Avi. That was really uh, I mean know, of I know, you to do I know. that. That's not fair. I'm sorry. Put him on the spot, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I know tomorrow's gosh. Easter, too. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, you're forgiven. <laughs> you're forgiven tomorrow. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. I saw somebody give uh, something to Larry and Rick, so I'm going to go with Merrill. Tally all your votes, guys. Rick Mahorn and Merle Hodge on round number two of the TKN Celebrity Tournament. Uh, how about you? Did you have a nice time tonight, my friend? I had a great time. You, you're a great human being. Did you have fun tonight, my friend? I always enjoy it when I do it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, I had a great time. Round number two is on the horizon. Looking forward to it. Here's I. I can't wait, bro. I just 
nail the fear and it's going to run through everybody else who has to compete with us. There's no other on this planet uh, that brings together the star power, the celebrities, and the, the hero power uh, you do and pit us all against each other in a way that doesn't feel like we're fighting or against <laughs> each other. It's a wonderful debate. It's such a rare commodity in the world these days. You know, there's so much um, misinformation and all of that stuff and so much sort of infusion of nonsense out there to have true opportunities for people to connect. And, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a commodity and it's a rare commodity these days. There's too much divisiveness. And you're, you're bringing the world together. You're bringing no, well, the world no. together, Avi. So this is, you know, thank, I thank love you, being a part of this.